everyone. Welcome to Spectrum Classes. This is our another NMR video and in this video we are going to discuss about the effect of hydrogen bonding on chemical shift value and the chemical shift value is represented in terms of delta ppm. ppm is the unit of chemical shift and this unit uh, signifies that the field is independent of the applied external magnetic field. So before discuss about the effect of hydrogen bonding, let's have a brief overview about the hydrogen. So hydrogen bonding is electrostatic interaction between covalently bonded hydrogen atom attached to electronegative atoms. So this hydrogen, the speciality of this hydrogen or the hydrogen atom which shows the hydrogen bonding is that it is covalently bonded with the highly electronegative elements that is nitrogen, oxygen and or fluorine. This hydrogen has electrostatic interaction with the lone pair present over the electronegative elements that is nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine. So hydrogen bonding is of two types. One is intermolecular and the other one is intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Here we are just uh, interpreting how this hydrogen bonding affect the chemical shift value fine you just try to think how this hydrogen bonding uh, influence this chemical shift value so how it we can interpret suppose this is h and this is f this is H again hf molecule so in this is intermolecular hydrogen so this is electronegative element this will try to pull the electron density towards its side so it acquires partial negative charge and it acquires partial positive charge. So while this hydrogen acquires partial positive charge, what is going to be happen? Electron density around this hydrogen decreases. Fine. So as we discussed earlier, if we somehow able to remove the hydrogen density up to certain extent, the hydrogen or the proton will shift which side? So this proton will shift downfield side. I have summarized few of the delta shift values for this inter and intramolecular hydrogen. In this acetic acid molecule or then we are having delta value 10 to 13 ppm and in this salicylic acid it observes 10 to 12 ppm and in the ketoenolic form it observes in the 11 to 16 ppm. This is how hydrogen bonding effect since due to hydrogen bonding the electron density around the hydrogen atom decreases the next is what are the effects so hydrogen bonding decreases the electron density it decreases the electron density around protons if electron density around the proton decreases it means we are having downfield shift effect of temperature so fine how you are going to understand this effect of temperature on hydrogen bonding. So on increasing the temperature, hydrogen bonding decreases. So as we are increasing the temperature, this hydrogen bonding decreases. If this hydrogen bonding decreases means this shift in the electrons decreases. So what effect we will get over here? So this shows a field shift. The point is that if we increase or decrease the concentration, concentration dependent is our intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Decrease the concentration of the solute, intermolecular hydrogen bonding increases. If we decrease the concentration, intermolecular hydrogen bonding decreases because molecules are far apart. Okay? So intermolecular hydrogen bonding on increasing the concentration increases and on decreasing the concentration it decreases. Intramolecular hydrogen bonding doesn't have effect of concentration, right? So here intermolecular hydrogen bonding since on decreasing the concentration it decreases. If we here it's the important point. Important point. Same solvent. If solvent remains same and we increase the concentration or decrease the concentration, one can interpret the hydrogen bonding present in the molecule. Okay. So here we will see a field shift. So do you understand with the field shift? Suppose it is the proton is having electron density around the proton. Okay. So this shows a field shift. The next point is 
polarity of the solvent. So polarity of the solvent is again an important point. So that we will discuss in the next slide. So now uh, we can, if we summarize the effect of hydrogen bonding, fine, it occurs in both intermolecular and intramolecular hydrogen bonding. And we have the downfield shift in both the cases. Effect of temperature, on increasing the temperature, hydrogen bonding decreases whether it is inter or intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Uh, in both the cases, we have a field shift. Effect of concentration, on increasing the concentration affects the intermolecular hydrogen bonding, but it doesn't have any effect on the intramolecular hydrogen bonding. So here I'll just summarize in, term, in that terms. And since it has concentration effect on intermolecular hydrogen bonding, so on decreasing the concentration, decreasing the concentration, we get a field shift. If we increase the concentration, we have down field shift. Okay. Down shift. So this is important point to remember. Next is the polarity of the solvent. Of the solvent it affects the intermolecular hydrogen bonding. So it has effect on intermolecular hydrogen bonding. Very less effect on the intramolecular hydrogen bonding. Here I'll just show you one example effect of solvent. If we take the 1HNMR spectra of chloroform in cyclohexane, we get peak at 7.3 ppm. If we take the same spectra in benzene, then we will have the peak at 1.56 ppm. So there is a very much difference on changing the solvent polarity. So here the effect of benzene is just because it behaves as a Lewis base for chloroform. So Lewis base, Lewis acid, uh, we will discuss in some other video, but here benzene is having double bond, so it uh, can donate towards this hydrogen atom. So in that way, it can transfer the charge and it alters the electron density around the hydrogen of the CHPL3. Further, it is uh, having ring current that we are going to discuss in the next video, ring current of the benzene also contributes towards this shift. So in this way, the solvent polarity alters the density and how it affects the chemical shift bending. The next is Van der Waals interaction. So Van der Waals interaction, you can see here, I am having one example of this. So what is Van der Waals interaction? Because of a steric hindrance in the molecule, the proton is forced close to other proton. So if we compare here these two examples, so here is the hydrogen and here is again the hydrogen. Same are the groups in both the molecules. And if we see delta value for this proton is 3.45. However, the delta value for this proton is 3.65. This is downfield shifted just because of the presence of neighboring CH3 group. Due to this hysteric hindrance, this proton interacts with the electronic cloud of this CH3 group and uh, the proton will feel de-shielded due to the Van der Waals interaction. So since this proton interacts with this with hysterically bulky CH3 group and therefore due to this Van der Waals interaction it feels downfield shifted. If we take some other example, so suppose we are having this, this molecule and here we are having this proton. So this proton resonates at 7.73 ppm delta value. If we are having this bulky group, this proton resonates at very much downfield side just because of the Van der Waals interaction. So if we are having bulky groups near in the nearby vicinity of the proton of interest, then that proton will feel downfield shift just because of the Van der Waals interaction. I hope you find this video informative. Please subscribe my channel. Thank you all.